And a long-awaited return to the UFC's Octagon for Trust the Nightest Touch. It's Leah Letson, and we haven't seen her since almost three years ago when she picked up a split decision win over Lithuania's Yulia Stoyarenko and a lot of different health issues being the barrier to a re-entry for Letson. So finally, she gets paired up a big-time fight where she competed on the Ultimate Fighter at Featherweight against a former title challenger in the Phenom Felicia Spencer, Matt, the record, not that sexy in the last five for Spencer, because if you look at it, she gets a win over Megan Anderson in her UFC debut. Awesome. She was an underdog. She was overlooked. Huge pop. She fights Chris Cyborg. Doesn't get finished. Doesn't get finished. Then she goes out there and she takes on Zara Farron and predictably she finishes her. I mean, listen, I wasn't surprised. Then she takes on Amanda Nunes and listen, doesn't get finished. Doesn't get finished. And then her last time out there, she takes on the immortal Norma Dumont. Hey, the hotness at 145 right now, winning main events at 145 right now is Norma Dumont. And in that fight, she loses. But listen, it's by split decision. She doesn't get finished. Doesn't get finished in that one. So Matt, for me, again, two wins to three losses in the five on in four, Felicia Spencer. A lot of activity, I guess we could say, in comparison to Leah Letson. But Matt, a lot of fans might not be familiar with Leah Letson, and I know that, oddly enough, UFC or, or the Ultimate Fighter heavy hitters, that was a season that you followed quite closely. What can you tell me about Leah Letson other than the fact that, per her Instagram, she's an approved instructor for concealed carry in the States? Uh, she's a really good forward aggression type of a striker. She does bring a lot to the cage. My whole problem, though, and just with this fight and with a, a lot about this fight... I need to know what's going on with the division past like two days. Like it would be really nice to have some sort of clarity on what's going to happen to the women's featherweight division. And are they going to keep it around? Because to me, it almost seems unjust to force Felicia Spencer to continue to fight in a division that she can't progress anywhere in. Like, uh, you work for a really big company and I'm sure that if you keep on doing a really, really good job, you can keep on like going up in the company. Cause that's how yeah, a lot I can of own work. fight night picks Fair. With Felicia Spencer, she's kind of stagnant no matter what happens. Like, she could win 10 fights in a row at this division. I guess the UFC would just have to keep on re-signing new talent for her to fight. But you get the idea. For me, she's behind Norma Dumont now, which is weird because I never thought she would lose that fight. But I did thought, or I did think at the time that uh, Dumont deserved that decision win. And we know she's not as good as Chris Cyborg, arguably one of the greatest women's athletes of all time. And same thing with Amanda Nunes. So when you're judging where Felicia Spencer really sits in the division, She's still kind of the number one contender, which makes this fight really, really odd. And this is a huge opportunity for Leah Letson in her first fight back. I really do think that has to be said, because if she is able to get a win over Felicia Spencer, I, I know maybe the hype around Spencer, if there ever was some, isn't as high as it was when she was getting title shots. But I still think a win over Felicia Spencer means something. It means that at least you belong in this division, or at least the UFC has a place for you moving forward. So I guess to circle back, to your original question, I actually think Leah Lensing can have a lot of success on the feet against uh, against Felicia Spencer, but it's really weird. We've seen Spencer look good in moments on the feet in some fights, but we've also seen her look really bad in moments uh, on the feet in some fights, and that's what's so odd. Like if you go back to the Chris Cyborg performance. I know she lost that fight quite handily, but she has a few techniques that actually do a really good job landing. She throws that weird, like, superwoman elbow that cuts uh, Cyborg on the forehead, and she throws that technique quite a few times, and it is able to land. But I don't know if I should put a lot of stock into that and think, okay, is Felicia Spencer one of these strikers who can adapt as she's fighting and kind of find the holes as she's in there? Or is that just something that she would have drilled a lot and it just kept on working in the fight? I know they seem like the same thing, but one is something you bring into the fight and you continue to do. One is something that you learn on the job while doing. I don't know if Spencer can make a lot of in-game adjustments with her striking. And I do think Letson can at least make some adjustments during the fight to uh, at least stifle some of the attack of Spencer. And the other thing about Letson, she also has quite good wrestling. She also can threaten with submissions as well. That's the really good thing. Like, if you haven't gone out and watched a Leah Letson performance, please do. I mean... Maybe you don't want to see the Stoyarenko split decision. You might not take a lot from it. Maybe you won't take a lot from the Macy Chasson win, but wins over Bia Malecki on the Ultimate Fighter. Elizabeth Phillips, where she finishes her in that fight. Sarah Payant. Now, that's this is the real big thing, Matt. Out of the wins, I'm going to read you, you know, we got to talk in terms of zeros and ones here. Cheyenne Cox, debuting fighter. After losing a split decision to kick off Leah Letson's career, beats 
Alena Jones, two and six. Sarah Payant, one and two. Elizabeth Phillips, five and four. Beats Malecki, who would have been what, like one and oh going into that season. Lose to Macy Chasson. Beats four, two and one. Yulia Stoyarenko. And I can talk somebody's ear off about Yulia, Yulia Stoyarenko and her time fighting in Lethway, like all the crazy things she's done in her career. And then they matched her up with fighters in 2019, Sarah Morris and Duda Santana. That's the thing that scares me. It's been a long time off. I read Leah's post over on her Instagram. She says, nearly eight weeks out from my fight. This is when it was posted. It's honestly a miracle I'm even healthy enough to take a fight again. There were so many dark days I've had to go through to get to this point for a long time. It wasn't even a guarantee that I would ever be able to fight again or undo the damage to my body and organs. It's incredible how far I've come and how much I've had to overcome just to get to this point. I'm so proud of myself for never giving up when everyone else in my position would have. I'm dead serious. This is like, breaking all the walls here that's awesome like the, it to is. follow your dream to be off for that long to get a fight in the ufc and hell for craig and matt allen and i'm not like no selling this to i think it's a halfway competitive fight too even though again i think she would have had a better shot against duda santana or sarah morris this is a tough fight but she has different wrinkles to her game that make this one interesting they make it interesting, but I, I guess this will just be like my last little prediction bit. Yeah. This just feels like they're setting Spencer up for a win. It really does. Like Spencer's one of the few 145ers who does have somewhat of a name still in this division because she's been around for a little while. Like not a lot of fighters in this division can say that they actually have a five on in in the UFC. And Felicia Spencer does like her fifth to last fight was that Megan Anderson fight. So she has been around for a little while now. And it was a close fight against Dumont. I could see if she is able to get this win over Ledson. Maybe they roll that one back. I know that's weird to say. It's just Main like event. what else do you? Yeah, like, what else do you do with these athletes at a certain point? So I, I like Spencer for this reason. When we talk about just skills, there's nothing Letson does all that much better than Spencer. There's not one area of her game that you can really point to and say, she really jumps out and she can do this way better than uh, Felicia Spencer. When I think about Spencer's at least offensive grappling capabilities on the mat, they really do stand out. I know she got controlled by Amanda Nunes. But there, there's levels, and quite frankly, nobody's on Nunes's level. But she has shown the ability to be a really tricky fighter. She can go past your guard. She really likes going to the back. And when Spencer is in that top position, she is a dangerous, dangerous submission threat. I won't even bother with the odds. I mean, realistically, Felicia Spencer is quite the favorite in this one. The topology votes 919 to them, 94% Spencer, 50% by decision, 37% by uh submission i want to make sure i get that right not over knockout i think spencer's going to win this fight i think the wrestling is going to be the defense the cardio and the pressure it's just uh yeah activity and no major major injuries and you know like issues barriers away from the cage i think it's awesome that leah letson's back and if she wins i'm going to be the first one lined up to congratulate her on this channel i can guarantee that but for me I've got to go with the uh, the transplanted Canadian training out of the States and both of us going with Felicia Spencer. Matt, unranked heavyweights in the co-main event. Are you ready Ooh, for it? I am. Are you ready? Ben Rothwell taking on Marcos Rogerio de Lima. You're not going to want to miss it. So keep it locked in with Fight Name Picks, as we always say. Let's get Let's into get it. Let's get into it.